The German spy chief has told the BBC that the far-right alternative for Deutschland party poses a risk to the roots of democracy. The AFD regularly rejects accusations of extremism, but the BBC has found clear links between significant party figures and extremists or even former neo-Nazi networks by investigating just one event held in the East German city of Cottbus. Our Berlin correspondent Jessica Parker has this report. In Germany's east, the far-right alternative for Deutschland is popular, even aiming for power. And Jean-Pascal Homme is a regional parliamentary candidate. The AFD is proactive on social media, but also on the ground, and it feeds this idea they want to promote, that they are of the people and taking on the establishment. But, as the BBC has found, Jean-Pascal Homs held links with several groups now classed by domestic intelligence as extremist, networks accused of anti-migrant, anti-Muslim ideology. All these organizations focus on one subject, the theme of our times. It is the population replacement going on in Germany and in Europe. To voice that and to fight that politically is not extremist. You don't think the great replacement theory is extremist? I mean, it's a, a, a far-right conspiracy theory. No, the great replacement is happening. I can see that in my own city. I do not say it is organized from up high. I say it's happening. It was at this office back in March that Jean-Pascal Homme helped organize an event. The speaker was an MP called Matthias Helferick, who once described himself as the friendly face of National Socialism, also known as Nazism. Matthias Helferick insists the years-old leaked messages were satire. His talk here in Cottbus was on remigration, a code word, say many, for mass deportations. Remigration is the political vision of a trusted home. In this video, he talks about remigrating millions to preserve the land of the Germans. And activist forefield. In the audience in Cottbus that night was Benedict Kaiser, another influential figure. He works for an AfD MP, but over a decade ago, Mr. Kaiser was pictured at neo-Nazi demos. We've approached him for comment became more and more right-wing extremists. This spy chief claims that extremism within the AFD poses a risk to democracy. When I'm speaking about a German oak, a big, strong old tree, it can take a blizzard, it can take a storm. But once you have an enemy that goes for the roots, and that's exactly what's happening right now, going for the roots of our democracy, it's very dangerous because it's, um, it, it goes to the vital parts of our democracy. The AFD says it's being smeared by a biased establishment. And as the country builds towards regional and EU elections, this isn't a fringe movement, but one trying to go mainstream. Jessica Parker, BBC News in Brandenburg. Let's speak to Assistant Professor of Political Science at Boise State University, Julia Van Dusky. Julia, welcome to you. You've written about the rise of the AFD in Germany, haven't you? How far-reaching are its links with the far right, would you say? So the German government has been investigating the AFD for quite a while because it is known that many of its members do have links to the far right. So there, it is far-reaching. Now, the far right, the AFD, rather, political party is gaining in popularity, isn't it, in Germany? What would you put that down to? So the AFD originally formed as a response to the Eurozone crisis. There are a lot of Germans who do not support the EU and they don't support Germany's role in the EU. And so now there's a party that represents their interests. Uh, there are more popular in East Germany amongst older people who had been socialized under a completely different political system. They lived under communism and an authoritarian regime. So politically, they're a little bit different than West Germans. So it's not surprising that the AFD is a little bit more popular there. And what do you think it means for the future democracy of Germany? Or would that be alarmist to even go there? 
currently, I don't think the AFD is going anywhere. However, I don't think they're big enough currently to ever form a government in Germany. They're still quite small. Um, and the other parties, the mainstream parties, are unlikely to form a government with them. So in the short term, they can make a lot of noise. They have a platform in parliament. But I don't think they're going to have a lot of influence over policymaking. Okay, Professor Julie Van Dusky, thank you very much for joining us with your analysis. Thank you.